We're here to idea you, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, and create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that women historically reduced wildfire risk in central Italy. Pisano shadow, women tread, silent stewards to the leaf and flame, their hands rough as the bark they skirt, a patchwork quilt for earth's unmade bed. Beneath their fingers memories stir, murmuring through groves, through vines, every unturned blade a sunken spark. They move like ghosts amongst the trees. Their legacy a faded collage of presence and loss. And still the setting stands, voiceless witness to its quiet keepers, a ritual unspoken, a fire tamed, a disaster unbirthed. This poem is inspired by recent research published in the journal Ambio, which has found that old farming methods, especially women's work like clearing leaves, help prevent wildfires, underscoring the value of these time-honoured techniques in protecting the land. When we look at the Mediterranean countryside, we're seeing a landscape shaped by centuries of farming and herding, known as agro-pastoralism. Yet the wisdom of these age-old practices, which once kept the land less prone to wildfires, has been largely overlooked. Indeed, a general disinterest in the science community has left a gap in our knowledge about how these activities influenced fire risks. In a revealing study focused on the Montpisano area in Italy, researchers turned to a blend of sources, including stories passed down by word of mouth, agricultural literature, walking surveys of the land, and insights from both fire control experts and local folk. What they uncovered was a rich tradition of managing the land that made it less likely to catch fire. A key part was played by women, who diligently removed dead leaves from the forest floor, while others collected wood and managed controlled burns. Such practices have been largely ignored or misunderstood due to a long-standing bias against traditional methods and the underappreciation of women's rural work. Nowadays, as many Mediterranean regions and other similar areas around the globe face increased fire risks, partly due to fewer people working the land, Recognising and understanding these traditional methods could be vital. The specific activity of clearing leaves, which has received little attention beyond Central Europe and tends to be a task undertaken by women, could have significant environmental benefits. The findings of this study could illuminate new pathways for managing fire risks in rural landscapes worldwide, highlighting the need for a deeper appreciation of traditional knowledge and the role of women in preserving our natural environment. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. In Montpisano's shadow women tread, silent stewards to the leaf and flame, their hands rough as the bark they skirt, a patchwork quilt for earth's unmade bed. Beneath their fingers memories stir, murmuring through groves, through vines, every unturned blade a sunken spark. They move like ghosts amongst the trees, their legacy a faded collage of presence and loss. And still the setting stands, voiceless witness to its quiet keepers, a ritual unspoken, a fire tamed, a disaster unbirthed. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. 
In this episode, I'll be reading Leaves by Ursula K. Le Guin. Ursula Kroeber Le Guin was an American literary icon who authored an expansive oeuvre including more than 20 novels, a dozen poetry compilations, over a hundred short tales and several essay collections. A Berkeley native, she graduated from Radcliffe College, held an MA from Columbia and furthered her studies in Paris. Le Guin's narratives often set in speculative worlds, probe deep philosophical themes. Her work spanned from children's literature to poetry, and also involved translating writers such as Lao Xu and Gabriella Mistral. She passed away in early 2018. Leaves by Ursula K. Le Guin Years do odd things to identity. What does it mean to say I am that child in the photograph at Kishimash in 1935? Might as well say I'm the shadow of a leaf on the acacia tree, felled 70 years ago, moving on the page the child reads. Might as well say I'm the words she read or the words I wrote in other years, flicker of shade and sunlight as the wind moves through the leaves. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.